Wait till you see the baseboard color I recommend for this. This is my final straw, y'all. Actually, it's Bear Paint's final straw. A lovely warm tan color that's technically part of the yellow color family, according to them, but really it just translates to a mid-tone that is neutral with a yellow undertone. I tend to enjoy colors of this depth in the secondary spaces of a home, usually. So those areas that may be a little off the beaten path, a little bit behind closed doors, around corners. Not necessarily the first color I think of when I'm painting the main portion of the space, like a hallway, but there really are not a ton of rules that you need to follow in this color selection business. What I'm gonna to do today is talk about some of the details behind Final Straw, maybe some ways that I would use it in my home, and also present you with a pretty fun color palette that I put together, all within the Bear Paint color catalog. So if you're a fan of Bear, Great, and if not, I'm sure you can still find some fun inspiration based off of these colors that I pick at the end of the video. So getting right into Final Straw, color code S320-3. Right away we can tell that this color is warm. Even though some would call it a fairly neutral paint color because maybe they're just bored by colors of this type, it's far from being gray in my mind. It's more so a sandy mid-tone beige tan that contains some of that yellow and a dash of orange to heat it up just a tad. I feel like warmer neutrals are a bit more pleasant to work with in a home environment specifically, because what do we say at the end of the day? Home sweet home, or more importantly, I can't wait to get home to my nice warm bed. We like warmth. It makes us feel nice and homey. While we obviously care about how our humble abode looks and how cool it looks, I think there's a slightly bigger need to give it a warm and cozy feel as well. And one of the super secret hacks sponsored by the paint people to do that is just use warmer colors in general. You want a warm home? Lean into warmer paint colors. Now Final Straw maybe has one point against it in my mind to some people. It's actually how dark it is, believe it or not. It may not seem like a super rich, deep paint color at first glance, but when we do a little deep dive on the Bare Paint website, it's actually not too deep of a dive. You just click on the color name on the website and bam, there it is. <laughs> it's the light reflectance value right over there. The LRV number is essentially a zero to 100 lightness score, which means the closer it is to 100, the more light that paint color will appear compared to other colors. And that's just because it's reflecting more light back into your little peepers. 53 is pretty much right smack dab in the middle and you may think that means it's kind of an average looking wall paint color, but based on my experience, I tend to see more paint colors sit around the 63 LRV range as kind of your sweet spot perfect color for general use, which means Final Straw is actually a bit lower, aka darker than that. What does that mean? Well, you just gotta know that this paint color is going to feel a little bit more robust for better or worse. This isn't going to be a complete neutral canvas color that's just gonna blend into your background. It's not going to be one of those bland builder's beige colors that has no personality. Final Straw is going to read as a pretty rich, golden beige kind of color. So you do wanna be intentional with how you decide to use it. Like I said, this is totally secondary color category for me. And this means not really a top front foyer choice, but I could definitely see it being used in areas like living rooms and dining rooms, things of that nature. And believe me, I know, one of you may have final straw in your hallway and it looks amazing. I'm not saying that it can't be done, it's just not usually what people gravitate towards, at least based on my experience. Let's talk about some color pairings that you can use with final straw straw, I'm just gonna give you a free color palette like I always do. It's one of my favorite things to do on this channel, and if you appreciate that, I would appreciate a cute little press of the like button for good karma. Just so cute, a little like button. I wanna do something a tad different with this palette, because normally, if I have a color like a final straw, I'll usually give you a really easy peasy light neutral as one of the pairings to use as your main color throughout. But in this case, I gave you three choices that all offer something different, where they can complement each other in different ways, just to give you a nice bit of variety that you can sprinkle throughout your home, like Salt Bay. A bit of an autumnal vibe, no doubt. And wait till you see my dark trim color option. It's gonna blow your brains. The first color pairing is a bit of a serious topic. And I'm not being facetious, it's climate change. 
But I gotta be honest, when has climate change looked this good, y'all? Like, wow. So this color is much lighter than Final Straw. It does share that same warm aspect, however, which I do enjoy, only this time the gold is dialed back and a little more gray is introduced, like a very light gray. And also a dash of green is present as well. And green is one of those hues that people seem to be intimidated by. But the reality is, I feel like green has so much going for it as a whole. It's a great connecting color because it can help bridge the gap between warm and cool. It has an intrinsic tie to nature. And it's just a color that is always relevant, especially for anyone out there that has a green thumb and loves incorporating plant life into their home. The color is also light and bright enough that you're going to be introducing a lot of light back into the space by going with this color, which is a plus considering this is the closest thing to a main color or a majority color in this whole palette. Next we have Still Gray, which is the darkest color so far. Spoiler alert, my subscribers watching know that the accent color is next. I'm not fooling you guys. This is not your ordinary gray. It has a touch of brown and a little kiss of green, which is perfect next to climate change and ever so slightly complementary to Final Straw. A slightly cooler feeling color. And I mean that, you know, color temperature wise, but it still fits with the other choices relatively easily. This is the color that I could see very much as an accent wall color. And you could incorporate it in an entire room, like maybe an office, especially if you wanted the space to feel very focused and sophisticated. Just make sure that you have some window light coming in or at least brighter elements to help counterbalance the depth of this color, because that might help with productivity and creativity. Oh, and by the way, I made a home office video design ideas thingy you can check out up here. After this one, of course, <laughs> obviously. The third color is part of the orange color family, but it's dark orange. And yes, that exists. This beautiful rusty brown is called October Leaves. And this color really rounds out that whole autumnal feel that I was teasing a little earlier. This is a color that introduces some nice saturation, a more clear complementary pairing to climate change specifically. And also it's a paint color that just adds a lot of dimension to this palette. This would be a really rad dining room paint color. Or if you really wanna get funky, you can throw it on the ceiling in your powder room and have a little connection between one room in another could be a fun idea. It is a dark color, however, reflecting only 12% of the light that hits it. So if you wanna be able to visibly see its coloration properly, try and use it in a space with an ample amount of lighting. Now we got some awesome trim colors to finish up because you definitely need something on your baseboards and your doors and your frames, anything that isn't drywall. Now, if we're going with a light color on your trim, I'm opting for off-white. And I picked it for two reasons. One, because it's a slightly different approach to trim where you're not going with a bright, stark white, but instead, quite literally, an off-white that will feel more soft, faint, and a little bit closer to the wall colors themselves. Another fun bonus is, it's the exact same lightness value as climate change, which we talked about earlier, only it has a little bit less of that green undertone. And this is great because it allows you the ability to swap these colors in and out, and then maybe put off-white on the walls instead of climate change, if you maybe didn't want as much of that green undertone coming through. Because I'm sure one or the other is just gonna work better depending on your space. But definitely the piece de resistance of this entire color palette is the dark trim color pairing and it's very avant-garde and fun. But I think darker dramatic trim should be that way. It's called boreal and although Bear says it's part of the blue color family, it's very much to me a deep cool green that is toned down slightly with some gray giving it a lovely and unique characteristic. This color looks so nice as a trim color for all the other colors. It's not necessarily a trim color I would put automatically throughout an entire home, depending on the house. Maybe older character rich homes could suit that. But really, even in a contemporary home, the odd room here and there, maybe on the doors themselves, I think it could be an amazingly fun choice for sure. Here's the palette all together. Let me know what you think. And here's another video for you about paint colors from me.